Hello, blessed and beloved jewelry community. Welcome to this live tutorial because it's going to be a tutorial. So it's Friday night here in Mexico City and we are going to go with one of the requests uh, here from Vietnam Crafts. Uh, you can find that request on the video uh, number five here, uh, one of my favorite tutorials. Uh, and uh, Vietnam Crafts asked, could you please create a video about Miyuki Delica bracelets? Thanks. So I answered that this is a great idea and that I will. And here we are. Uh, if you're following my social media, and you should, <laughs> my Instagram or my Facebook or YouTube channel, uh, you know that I did already publish a, a project, a render, a, a version of that bracelet a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, this is this one. So uh, the tutorial is going to be uh, with blender okay and um, we're going to start uh, modeling but also I'm, I'm going to explain first before we go to blender here uh, is blender we're going to use blender 3.0 alpha one of the latest release my release is from uh, last uh, week of blender so I'm I'm generally using one of the latest build of uh, blender and uh, it's working great honestly it's working great okay so first before we go to modeling like i always say we should first study what is a miyuki bead or miyuki delica bracelet because we're not supposed to know so let's go to let's go to let's go to the internet. Uh, let's go to Chrome first. Let's go to Chrome. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to explain uh, what. Well, just simply go me Yuki bead. What are we going to find? Well, let's go to the official Miyuki beads corporation Japan so Miyuki is actually a very traditional Japanese uh, craft and they're almost a hundred years old a bit less actually you can go the the website is it's good because there's a lot of information and you can go to history here and uh well there's 70 plus 20 year there are 91 years old as a business as a uh, bead fabric so you can read the story and you should read it it's interesting so it's a long uh, family tradition and um that's why i'm very interested in this request because I love doing things that are very modern because 3D modeling is quite modern still and also mixing with tradition which is a very good example working with Miyuki beads so um, here we are and um, well obviously uh, that kind of jewelry is not generally the kind of jewelry that I do because this is uh, this is more like a jewelry craft and uh, I more a goldsmithing jeweler I work uh, gold I work silver and uh, my tradition is very different so here we are in a different field of the jewelry horizon uh, but obviously, during all the years that I had the jewelry school, that I, I need to remember people that the school is now forever closed because came the pandemic, I was already, mm, well, actually, yes, tired and bored 
and sad of teaching from Monday to Saturday. But anyway, it was a great project, great experience. I teach during 17 years and here we are again. So beads, glass beads. So obviously the Miyuki beads are famous for their quality. And there are many colors, effects like the metallic beads, and there are many shapes. And the Miyuki Delica bead is a specific shape and size. So we are going to uh, keep using the website to have a look at the sizes uh, because there are um, sizes. Okay, here we can get the size and shape of seed beads. Okay, so every size and shape has names and codes. And what I liked about the website is that we can find the correct information about the sizes of the beads because we are going to make these beads in Blender in 3D. So it's always important to have the correct information about the sizes. Actually, without the proper size, I would not be here making this video about the Miyuki beads and about making a Miyuki Delica bracelet using Blender and designing that in 3D. So we go down the list and we're gonna find that there are Delica beads. So a Miyuki Delica bead bracelet is a bracelet made of that type of bead, which is cylindrical. And uh, uh, if you, obviously then you need to, to read about patterns because there are many designs and it's quite fun uh, because on the Miyuki website, you can also find some um, examples of patterns. Let's see. Okay, project. I think it's in project. Okay, and here you can see different types of uh, designs made using the beads. And uh, different techniques for stitching the beads. And obviously, it's a lot of fun to make this in 3D. Uh, and there are also a lot of uh, metal findings that they have in their catalogs because we'll have to model the, the endings of the bracelet and we're going to make them metallic. Generally, they're not made uh, of gold. They're made of brass with maybe a gold finish, a gold bath, uh, gold plated. Um, but generally they're, they're made of uh, different metals and there are many ranges of prices. Okay. Uh, so obviously for this, uh, tutorial, we are going to make a very general design, a very general pattern, but okay. So today, the goal of today for the time I have, because well, generally I'm going to be uh, streaming during two hours. So that's already quite long and um, then I will have to rest, obviously. But the goal of this uh, tutorial is in the first part, we're going to model the bracelets as much as we can. And in the second part, if there's more modeling that must be done, finish the modeling and make obviously the render because let's see a Miyuki, Miyuki bracelet because obviously to create the patterns the colors for the bracelet for the shading for the materials you are going to need some pretty good tricks pretty good a pretty good technique to do this and uh, obviously I already uh, made my own technique to do that in a very interesting efficient way that we're going to see in Blender, obviously, but that will be in, in, in another tutorial some other day. So the first thing we need to check is the proper size, like I already said. So let's go back to the sizes, size and shapes. And I'm going to comment something about the size, because if you look at the size, the information about the size. We have 
that's in millimeters. So this is, and they're very small beads. You're going to see that the design of the bracelet is going to uh, have more than a thousand beads. And that's quite common. Not because we're going to do something very intricate or very complex. It's going to be complex in the pattern somehow. And uh, the modeling is interesting also because we need to stitch the beads because we are going to model it in a realistic way and because it's also funnier. So the size, 1.6, that's the di diameter on the outside. That's the Delica bead 11, which is one of the most used one, the favorite ones. That's what I read in many, well, you can check some other tutorials of uh, people uh, sewing, making the bracelets with uh, needles. By example, that's a very common technique to, to, to make these bracelets using needles uh, to stitch all the beads. And um, um, and what about that? And see them do that in real life. That's obviously what I did be before starting making this in 3D because you need to make some research about what you're going to do in 3D. So the more you know about what you're about to model, the best you'll, have, you'll do and the uh, more fun you will have. All right. So we have 1.6, that's on the outside and 0 0.8 on the inside that's the size of the hole you can always check that at the top of the list here size and you can see that the size is outside diameter in millimeter and the whole size so 0 0.8 millimeters that's already less than one millimeter so the hole is already pretty small eight decimals okay so let's go back but there is something that we don't have it's the width of the bead and that information you won't find it like that so before we model all of that we're going to go to my hard drive somewhere because i i am going to show you how to properly find the measurements so you can use what you need to do uh, from the website is take this picture. You can save it as a save the image. You, you will save the image. And so here I save the image. Okay, so here to find the size, there is a, um, there is a way to bring the image. It's an example, it's a way to do, to do that. Uh, just bring the image in a vector graphic software like Corel, like uh, Adobe Illustrator. And we are going to check the measure here. So if you can see the square, this is a vector square. And we can see the size 16 millimeters, which is, uh, I made it 10 times bigger on screen. So we can see the pixels and have a lot of precision. So that's the size, well, at scale 110, it's 10 times bigger. And this is the width. And we can see that they're not totally square on the side. The side is a bit smaller, it's 13. And obviously because it's 10, uh, 10 times bigger, it's going to be 1.3 millimeters. Okay, so now we have all the data we need to make well, it's a very simple cylinder, honestly. And, um, but nonetheless, we need all that information before we go to Blender. So step one, we're going to, okay, so here in Blender, we have cylinders, etc., etc. but we have no tube. So we are going to work first with a cylinder. I'm going to make it at a very nice resolution uh, let's go with a 120 vertices here. Okay. And um, the rest of the sizes, we're going to give it using the N menu. So we can go out this, uh, sorry, N. Come back window. Here we are. So location 000, let's center our bead. Uh, we're going to work from uh, the top view and the sizes so dimension 
we are going to work at 1.6, 1.6, and the thickness or the width in this specific occasion, 1.3. Like I already show how to make the that measurement, okay? So these are the sizes on the outside. Now we are going to make a control A, uh, all transforms. Don't forget to save your project at the beginning. Put a name to the project, obviously, and save your file. Okay, now we're going to make a copy of this. Shift D, enter. So like the website, say, uh, the website says very well, the inside is 0.8. Okay, so let's go at 0.8. 0.8 and we can make this pretty big we just need uh, to we are going to make a boolean you could build it differently but it's okay I already tested many methods and so okay this uh, that's the bead uh, it's going to make a boolean use a fast solver difference and you remove you drill the inside oops <laughs> it's not even okay make it exact if the fast one doesn't work generally the exact one works uh, this is very simple geometry so it should not make much problems okay then we are going to add a small bevel a small bevel <laughs> so let's go at 0.02 maybe point, 0.03 so a simple bevel it makes the bead close to what it is in reality they have a small fillet on the outside generally because of the way they're manufactured and this is the proper miyuki delica bead number 11 based on the real sizes that we can find on the miyuki website okay so we can we can make a copy of this. Uh, if you want to make other sizes, I advise you to make copy of uh, the, the meshes you use to make and create this shape. Now this is the copy and the copy we're going to make the object convert to mesh. Okay, so now the geometry is very clean. I'm going to leave it as a flat shading for now. It's not really much a problem to change that later. And what we're going to, to, to change though is the orientation. We need to rotate this because I want to build all the pattern of the bracelets uh, here. Like we're going to do something with a bit more colors than that one. But these patterns are interesting or something like this. These are very common uh, patterns for these type of bracelets. So something geometric with colors, that's something what we're going to build. But that will be for the second part of this tutorial. And uh, I want the correct orientation. There are many orientations that you can, well, many. <laughs> let's, let's say there are three basics. Um, from bottom to the top, from left to right, that's a different orientation. And you can use a, by example, 45 degrees orientation. Let's see if there is, uh, because when you look, okay, here you can see that the heart has a 45 degrees bead orientation, okay? This is one example. Most of the time, the beads go from the bottom to the top, which would be from right to left in this side, uh, in this, orientation but if you because we're going to make the first bead it's going to be okay you can go to learn more about the pattern and the stitches you can go to project and uh, let's go to bracelets okay bracelets are already here and let's see okay this one is a good example we can download the pdf and it's going to open the PDF. Okay, so here in this um, schematic, 
you you are going to find the schematics. That's why also the the website they have is interesting because they have uh, pattern and schematics for many projects. Okay. Well, here they're going from uh, left to right. They're stitching like this. Okay, they're going from left to right and bottom to top. You can see the orientations. But I'm going to go from left to right and from bottom to top. What does that mean now in 3D? Well, it means that we need to rotate. We're going to rotate the bead like this, 90 degrees on the X axis. And now this means that we're going to stitch the beads from bottom to top and from left to right. So now from here, we are going to use simple arrays. So let's go to array and first from bottom to top. So it's not on the X factor, it's on the Y factor. And let's have a look at, <laughs> okay, control A rotation, thank you, because obviously that's what we should get without any, any kind of problem or whatever. And we are going to put, because there are wires, which are generally they're nylon wires, there are metallic wires, nylon wires, I think, plastic wires, elastic wires. Uh, there are several types for these type of uh, jewelry crafts. There are, uh, but you can also actually let's go keep on. Let's let's read a bit more here. Let's search. Let's search. Miyuki bracelets uh, wire. And we should find some images of the findings of the product. Okay, nylon, nylon wire. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, so these type of nylon wires, that's what we're going to use also for the material for the render. And uh, they have specific sizes. Let's see, well, let's see this blue one, which is actually the color I'm going to use. Um, okay, what's the size of this? The size is size. Uh, <laughs> um, well, actually here we can't find the, the, the thickness of the wire. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's not always so straightforward or easy to find the, the correct real size of the findings of the beads of the jewelry component, because obviously there are some parts of the business that uh, are kept or well, kept secret somehow, yes, yes, indeed. Because we don't really want anybody and everybody to be doing this, okay? So we need to talk about sizes, <laughs> all right? So let's find, because I know the size I want to use, which is 0 0.3 millim uh, millimeters for the wiring between the beads, for the stitching. But I just want to confirm, let's try to confirm, uh, maybe on Amazon we are going to find a, the, that information. It's, they should because it's obviously one of the first question. What's the caliber of the wire? Does it say, okay, it says number 11, which is the gauge. Um, we can check gauge, gauge 11. And uh, that's, and okay, that's not even real because that would be three millimeters. So it's not the same gauge. It, it might be another unit. 
Okay. Um, or maybe it's so obvious because, yeah, generally. Uh, or maybe on the Miyuki website. Let's have a look at nylon thread. Okay, let's let's try to find maybe nylon thread Miyuki Miyuki nylon thread uh, thickness thickness please. Okay, perfect. This is perfect. Here we have one information. So actually, it's half of what I was thinking, and that's better because it's going to be a better um a finer version i'm going to make not the same version that i already did i'm going to make another pattern another realism to this and we're going to use a wire of 0 0.15 millimeters so that's one decimal and a half so that in blender is i'm going to bring a bezier curve here as a reference and we are going to go to the geometry for that uh, here. And okay, let's remember that in the newer versions of Blender, we can directly use a round bevel and the depth is going to be the thickness and it's the diameter. So we need here to go at 0 0.0075, which remember that if that's the radius, the diameter it's double of that and we are going to get the 0.15 millimeters in real life so we get this i know sorry there's one zero too much zero zero five seventy five okay perfect so we can see that the scale of the nylon wire which are i am going to use bezier curves to make the the, the stitches the, the wires the nylon wires we can see that the scale is it's matching the scale is really matching and we are going to have stitches on the outside but there are some wires going between every uh, row and that means that you need to give some space for the wire between all the beads even if in real life the the nylon wire has some elasticity it might be a bit compressed between the beads with the, the tension of the, the craft of the work but we are going to leave a good space so this is all because i'm talking about making we are going to make the full array for the entire bracelet with just two arrays but we need to give the proper sizes and spaces to the beads if we want to make a real looking miyuki bracelet in 3d using blender obviously all right so this means that this factor here is a bit more and that's why i went and checked the size for the the wire the real wire so this is this one okay and okay like i said um it might be a bit compressed but i'm going to leave I'm going to give okay this this space is just a bit bit but really really slightly less than the the size of the wire okay so now that I have the proper spacing I can put in the correct I want 11 beads per column so because this is going to be the the, the width of the bracelet of the entire bracelet let's go see patterns and bracelet again around here okay so it's going to be the width so here we can count the beads it had one two three four five six seven beads and obviously when you want a center geometric pattern you are going to need an an even number of uh, beads okay like three five seven nine eleven thirteen and because i want a pretty uh, wide bracelet because it's more attractive i think 
uh, that's why I choose like uh, let's see the here we can count do we have one two three they have more here they are a lot more 13 13 beads I have 11 it's so not that wide as this, this one just a bit smaller all right but it also depends on the findings that you're gonna have because like in this project you can see here oh, sorry uh, can we see yeah we can see here we can see that they're using a type of clasp that obviously they sell uh, they manufacture for uh, and they sell those findings it's part of the Miyuki business obviously and it's a specific size you won't be you you won't find these clasps at any size okay so but I don't want to design this clasp this clasp for this model I, I want something like a tri uh, a triangle shaped uh clasp that we'll see later obviously okay so that's to explain the amount here 11 beads and that's the first array all right now we need another array array in the other direction that's going to be from left to right that's why i said for we're going to go from bottom to the top with one array that's the y factor and on the X factor, we're going to go from left to right. But also, we are going to have, are we going to have, um, are we going to have, let me see, let me see the pattern again. So here, the pattern, okay, we have here, okay, let's have a look at, Okay, this schematic is very uh, simple, but obviously we need, okay, uh, in between. Okay, this one is not uh, accurate enough as a schematic, but what, I, what I'm saying is that we are going to have, so this got 90 degrees. Are we going to have um, wires? In between let me see my bracelet then because I don't remember let me see this okay here we have the wires on the outside and just from one to one but I'm going to do another type of stitching okay but we're not going to have but we are going to put a small space because let's say that in real life the beads can't really be that close that would not be realistic. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So this factor also is going to be like one or two, maybe one or three. Let's go to one or three, something like this. Okay. So now, now for the dimension on the amount of rows, uh, columns, columns, the amount of columns, you need to know the size of your wrists. So you take a flexible uh, well uh, measuring tape or something like that or a wire and then you measure the wire uh, let's say i have a this is too rigid i can't really take the measurement of my wrist but i already know that my wrist and in general a, a well, let's say woman in general is like 16, 15 centimeters long. And man, it's generally like 23, 25, something like that. My wrist is quite, uh, uh, well, not thick. <laughs> the opposite of thick, I don't even remember uh, some words some, from time to time. Okay, so. We're going to make the bracelet at 21 centimeters, uh, counting the endings, the finding, the clasp, and all of that. So I'm going to go about a, hoo, 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 20 centimeters. So let's find the count. Let's go at 115, something like that. Okay. So you can see now using a hundred and fifteen columns for the second array on the x direction you can see that 
we have using 115 columns we only get uh, not even a 19 centimeters just a bit less so in fact I want a bit more let's go 120 okay that's pretty nice for all the beads that's pretty nice for all the beads okay so this is for all the beads all the beads all the beads for uh, for this bracelet and if we go to calculator okay here we are so we have 11 beads per column multiplied by 120 no i said rows columns well whatever it's 11 per 120 so this version of this bracelet at 20 centimeters ends up using a thousand three hundred and twenty beads it's quite a lot and um but that's what we need for the size of a, a real bra bracelet you can you can check the size of the beads you can check the size of the wrist of your wrist and the size of the findings and all of that and you'll find out that very quickly you are going to end up with a lot of beads but that's okay check the numbers and if you check the numbers you won't be that much surprised about the amount of beads you are going to end up using all right um let's call these the miyuki 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 beads 11 <laughs> 11 per 120 okay so this is the bracelet actually let's call it the bracelet bracelet etc etc so what i might want to do now we're going to create a collection and we're going to create it uh, call it the um, yuki bracelet me yuki bracelets let's put the proper names it's always nicer so the miyuki bracelet is going to be you can move it to the other collection and that's it for the uh, for all the beads but now we are going to do the stitching work okay and let's create a new collection let's call it wires so I already have these uh, uh, Bezier curves but I'm going to move them to wires and I'm going to delete uh, this one this one was just a reference for spacing this one won't exist and we are going to make the stitching of all the beads with the wires. So this is wire 0.001. Okay, we are going to put a higher resolution here. Let's go at 100. Like I said, I'm going to use a quite high resolution for this uh, 3D model because it's nicer for the quality, you know. Okay, and also let's go with materials already. Let's start assigning materials. We're, we're not going to make the materials now because like I said today, it's the modeling of uh, the bracelet. Okay, uh, so let's go for the beads. We're going to call that um, bead glass because they're made of glass. And the wire is going to have wire nylon. So let's just assign materials and i'm going to change this for view uh, the viewing pleasure <laughs> of in the viewport in the 3d view let's assign a and like i said i want some uh, bluish nylon because it's good looking for this project all right here we go so uh, now we need to make uh, all the wiring all the stitches and in fact here uh, I'm going to um, activate the snap to the grid absolute grid snap and this uh, I might bring here obviously it's not going to be exactly the position I want and the handles because we're going to go from left to right with just two 
with just two vertices and this one uh, let's bring it uh, okay so let's bring this one into a proper position here let's keep the handle straight uh, distance the distance or if we don't want to use the grid because sometimes it's not so good we can use simply the coordinates this is going to be the coordinate on the y axis okay so for this point we're going to copy the y coordinates let's go back all to the left and remember that this bracelet is 20 centimeters long which is a real life bracelet okay and on this vertex let's copy the y position ah, and sorry let's go <laughs> okay um we need to use a global positioning uh, reference so let's just use this one okay because then we'll have to do the same for the handles sometimes we do use okay copy paste so that one is good but for this handle let's also paste on the y to make a very straight line okay and um, on the on the x-axis let's not worry that much and just bring it <laughs> let's just bring it there then we are going to make the knots we are going to make the knots in 3d uh, it's quite fun okay so this is just the wire that goes from left to right between all the beads okay there's one on the outside between all the beads and one at the top so okay so this one this wire uh, and let's check that don't forget to check let's say front view mm, okay here we need to be at zero uh, ooh, why not <laughs> let me check something about this original bead are we centered here yes we're centered here okay so we're centered on this side but why aren't we centered on that side Ah, because there's a mistake <laughs> on the Z uh, okay now go to edit mode on the global Z axis let's go at zero thank you sir and let's check that the other one where are you Scooby-Doo are you here okay I'm sorry here okay let's check that this one is at zero two and it was not okay you need to center the wires because that's the way they're made. They go through the center. Okay, W. Now we're going to use an array on that. Uh, so it's a basic curve. Uh, later on, we are going to try to keep the Bezier curve and not a mesh for the wiring of all the bracelet. So let's put an array here and uh, it's not on the x factor it's on the y factor obviously we need to find here you can slide the number and we need to find uh, the most accurate position in between uh, let's say so 9.62 so anyway this number is not necessarily accurate at first at all okay you can uh okay let's just put a number that seems to be correct but now we need to add the rows and we need 12 rows because we need one uh on the outside uh, on every side and in between all the beads so something like this and we need to check that the ending wire is at the correct distance this one ends up just slightly further too far away and um, we need we need a bit less here so it's going to be four three two okay it's 2.5 perfect okay so like I said I'm going to make this realistic with a lot of accurate precision but like thinking in the real life uh, Miyuki bead bracelet, right? It's based on that. And that's why I started this entire tutorial talking about the Miyuki Corporation, the, the glass beads they make, the sizes, the measurements, the findings, 
And then we went uh, on a small research to find the thickness of the Miyuki thread, which is the nylon wire. Okay, and uh, this is the one I'm using now, okay? There are very probably more uh, uh, variety of threads for these bracelets, for these crafts, but it's okay with this one. Oh, right. So these are the wires that go in one specific direction from left to right. We also need to obviously now stitch all the beads together and there are many different patterns to do that and we're going to do that in 3D uh, so we're going to make something realistic like I already said and let's go again with a new add curve bezier curve so here we're also going to go at the same resolution the new curve let's go at the same 100 resolution like I said quite a high resolution the round Thickness is the radius at 0 0.75, uh, 0.075, sorry. Okay, here we are. The material is also going to be the wire nylon here. And now we are going to have a look at, let me see something. Okay, at the stitching of the wires that go from, uh, well, I said actually that we're going to go from bottom to top. Okay. So uh, we are going to create something that we can also repeat using the array because there are a lot of wiring between all these beads. <laughs> we have more than a thousand beads here. So I won't do all the stitching manually, obviously. That would not be a that would not be a, a clever technique. So uh, we are going to come around here somewhere. We're going to do this in a couple of steps. So, so the wire needs to go. If this one goes over this one, okay, then on the other side, it needs to go under from top to bottom. Okay, so now here I don't know exact. Uh, well, I've seen videos, and uh, most of the time, just just go from that side to the other side. Okay, so we are going to bring that. Uh, ah, and you know what? Sorry, let's go out of edit mode for a second. We need to go to geometry heel, and don't forget to fill the caps also the amount here of resolution let's go at 8 let's go at 12 12 is better so the same here field caps resolution 12 all right this is a lot nicer now this wire needs to go a bit like here and this one needs to go to the other side so let's use the left mouse button click with the control key here and we're totally far far away Let's go to the back view. This vertex must come here and it's just, mm, okay, top view and it must go to the other side. And like I said, because on one side I have it over the other wire, this one must come under the other wire. All right, so we're gonna, we're going to go, oh, 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 let's go. Here somewhere and uh, the middle here. And now we're just going to make this come uh, mm, 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 mm. okay to well let's first just design the wiring in a some uh, realistic way. So like I said, under one side, under the other one. Okay, this one we might very well need a lot more of uh, uh, vertices to make uh, this bracelet all right okay here we are <laughs> now this should not go that far away make it somehow pretty straight doesn't have to be totally straight it's not necessary at all 
Okay, and uh, just like this. But we are stitching the beads, so the wire should grasp the next wire accordingly to a proper. Okay, so this should come like this. And you're gonna see that when it's finished, it's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty. We could go like this also. We'll see that later. Later, these are details. But let's first stitch it. Uh, let's stitch. Okay, so here by example, we can take these two beads with shift W subdivide because I might want to change this shape to something pretty. Like I said, we're going to make the stitching look interesting with a nice uh, level of realism so we need to have just have fun with this and like always i'm taking my time during the tutorials to show all the steps um obviously uh, advanced user might go a lot faster but uh it's not i mean like i'm taking my time because we need to check that everything is in its correct place. So it's not that I'm using a lot of Blender tools or functions and all that, because it's not about that in this specific jewelry modeling uh, in 3D is a very specific profession. Anyway, and that's why they pay me that much. In fact, I make a lot of money uh, modeling in 3D because I have a very specific a professional segment it's a niche inside a niche market and there are not that many people uh, properly modeling 3d jewels there are many people who because like i always say you need first to be a jewelry maker like a real jeweler working in metal you know you need to, to know the entire jewelry goldsmithing techniques then you should become a 3D jewelry designer, but only if you are a real life jeweler is the best you can do. And you should really forget about really being a jewelry designer if you know nothing about jewelry making in real life. There are <laughs> millions of jewelry, des no, sorry, jewelry designers who pretend to design jewelry but they're just creating problems because they know nothing about jewelry manufacturing. First, you're a jeweler, a jewelry manufacturer, then you become a jewelry designer, then you become a, talking lava about technical drawing by hand using uh, squares and, and all of that, and the compass and all of that. You need to learn technical drawing of jewelry by hand it's necessary don't believe anybody who says that it's not necessary everybody that says it's not necessary uh, is not a professional you can bet on that and then you learn 3d okay that's the proper but whatever let's make the miyuki bracelet and let's keep on with it okay so this uh, is a bit too high Whoop. this is a bit too high here this one Whoop. And we're going to bring this friend a bit further away. And okay, this is pretty nice here. I just want this curve. So the back view control one. Yeah, I want this curve to be pretty nice looking, which is what I'm working on right now. So like I said, these are very specific details. Okay, something like this should be pretty okay on that side. But that we'll see later uh, making the array. Okay, on this side, I need to do something similar, honestly. Uh, this side is not ready. Okay, so here and there, we shift W subdivide, and we are going to go to the front view. And we need a similar shape. Okay, so this is uh, too high. Let's see the handle somewhere here. Mm. We could make it go a bit like this just so that the wire is not too uh, boring 
too repetitive. Just that, okay, so this needs to go okay, like this. Let's make this one like this, something like that. Okay, this one, obviously on that side, I will have to do a specific knot to close uh, the side. And uh, so obviously today we're, we're making a totally different type of, uh, I'm not making a ring, finally. <laughs> we're not designing rings, finally, because I'm almost always in the designing rings. You need to understand that rings are the start, the start of the show. The rings generally in jewelry design is like the, the dream of every jewelry designer is to make an amazing ring, you know, that is going to be featured in Hollywood, on the red carpet, etc., etc. <laughs> My cat is pushing the phone. There you go. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so today we're making a Miyuki bead bracelet. So it's a totally different craft, in fact, which like I explained at the beginning is not necessarily my craft. But um, at my school, we used to teach that. I had very good uh, craft teacher. Uh, I was the one uh, teaching uh, jewelry and tree design and, and all that. And I, well, I kept doing that uh, at a private level, all right? And okay, something like this. Now we are going to make uh, an array of this. So we have, we're going to have a more than a hundred uh, columns of this wire. Let's go to array. And obviously the distance, uh, let's go, I don't know, at point eight maybe. Uh, I know it's way less, point 0.5. Okay, so here we all have to, okay, that's what I'm going to see. We need to adapt. Well, I'm, I'm already going to adapt. So let's go to edit mode because we need this to go further in fact. Uh, here, here somehow, you need to, okay, and this could go a bit more like this, all right, just check that the wire is uh, not entering into the other wire too much, it might just a bit, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not that, uh, don't, don't become too crazy about, uh, precision in specific areas you do need a lot of precision in some more artistic creations you, you can be a bit more uh, generous with your numbers and precision you know okay so something like this okay but also i want what i want is that this wire this wire i'm going to uh, make it a lot wider okay so something like that we are going to say that this wire, I'm just going to have a look at this. Is this wire going to be, yeah, we're going to make it go inside the other one, like, like this, okay? So now, and that's what I was talking about, that the stitching, uh, is going to end up pretty nice because it's going to uh, look a bit like a Celtic pattern. This is just a collateral benefit of what I'm designing now for the wire. That's why I'm taking my time to to do the, the wiring of the bracelet in a pretty accurate way. But also uh, here we could, let's add just another point here. I want it to fade into the other uh, wire, which is, that part is not realistic. Let's be, uh, you, you gotta be, <laughs> let's be honest and let's be also realist, um, objective about our work. But I want this one to, okay, so I need this to be lower. And I want it to fade into the other one, into the, the next wire, something like that. But I don't want this curve to be this high. So I need this to be something like this and this a bit. Okay, okay, something like this. 
I don't know yet if I want that much separation there on the inside. Okay, so then I could move this a bit. Oh, okay, this is a bit nicer. And it hides pretty well. But still, I want this a bit lower. and A bit lower. Front view. Can I... Can I change this to something a bit... Okay, this is pretty, pretty good. Something like this. And uh, okay, so, so it fades, but on the outside, it looks like a nice wavy pattern. And this is ex exactly like, well, the design I, I want for the wire for this stitching. Let's have a look on the inside. Okay, here we can see still on the, uh, on the far end there that this friend there, this knot, is this vertex is too high. Like I said, I want it to fade into the wire like this. Okay, now, hmm, looks good. Okay, let's have a look at this side and we need to do something similar with this and move this. So it's not that easy because when you move one side because of the array factor, it moves on the other side and it might undo what you just did, which is part of the fun, obviously. And um, you don't have to, to check the pattern uh, every now and then. Okay, something like that. Let's have a view here uh, because I want a nice curvy looking wire here and there. And like I said, I don't want uh, and not, I want a realistic distance for the wire. The wire must be tight because this is the stitching of all the bracelet between all the beads. So you can have distances between the wires, okay? So it takes a little time to do all this. Okay, let's say I have a proper stitching, but I need now like a 120 some, let's, so let's go 120. And uh, okay, we're uh, on the other side, but obviously let's have a front view. And now the the distance, the distance. Well, obviously it's uh, wrong. We need less distance because we need one wire for every row. Uh, no, sorry, for every column. <laughs> this these are the columns. So for every column, we need a wire. Okay, the camera's going to move a bit more to me. Are we here? <laughs> it's too far. Okay, here. Gotta be centered to the camera. Hello, blessed and beloved jewelry community. How are you doing today? Thanks, <laughs> Friday. So I've been working for what? 45 minutes? No, it's already one hour. Okay, it's not too bad. We're, okay, it's not too bad. Like I said, uh, the goal is like uh, two hours maximum. I think I need to be a bit less today. But anyway, this is working pretty well. Okay, so now the distance for the factor point, I don't know, 45. Okay, point uh, 44. So there's no magic trick on finding the number and also no magic add-on uh, that's going to do that for you. This is proper 3D modeling, you need to use your brain, your creativity, and Blender uh, using the, the most basic and simple tools. You can make amazing jewels. I, I say, I said that many times, but um, well, anyway. Okay, so let's go have a look at what's happening on the inside. Okay, but the problem is that <laughs> that's not enough. We need more distance, in fact, because every wire needs to be centered to the next, to the next bead, uh, to the next column of beads. Okay, so that's obviously a design problem, and we need. Well, I actually we should have this at 0.5. So this means this means that probably the distance here might be shorter. Uh, is this one? Hmm. 
It's just because I don't know yet if I'm going to make it shorter on the left or on the right to center the wires. I need to. Uh, okay, that's too far. I know, but that's not too bad. Okay, so maybe 49. And okay, let's go at 48. Okay, 48. No, it's still a bit too much. 475. Because it must be just okay. Then obviously we'll have to adjust some of the vertices on the inside. Let's have a look. You need to go check all up to the end here. Okay, this is too much. Seven. And because it multiplies that much, okay, uh, just a slight change in the number makes a huge difference at the end. You need to understand that pretty quickly. 0.8 is too, okay, this one ends here. Let's go at 21. Okay, that would be, obviously the last one we'll have to adjust it. We, we'll need to, to make custom wires for the, the beginning on the left side and for the ending on the right side. We'll have to uh, make a custom uh, knots also because we are going to need some knots, especially to uh, stitch uh, the wire to the endings. We are going to design a finding, a metallic finding for the bracelet, and we are going to need not we are, yeah we need to design knots that's the concept okay the distance seems to be pretty good let's go have a look on the other side on the top side and let's see if the wire is okay so here we need to adjust a bit but i think that this distance is pretty good okay so let's start adjusting on this side Okay, here I need to use the magnifier because the object is so big, uh, you can't really get a nice craft. Okay, here. Let's ed go to edit mode and we need to make the addition of the vertices again. Okay, so this one is that one and this one is too much okay this is pretty good but top view we have this we can see it just a bit more and let's try to make it go a bit straighter straight here uh, with the transparency of the orange line no i don't want to move it like that not that much i just want to make to move this one and fade inside the other wire okay so we should see only one line something like this so on the interior on this side we're pretty good now let's go to the other side top view also for the other side in fact here we can see that this one is way much to the right so let's come back and move it to the left because okay so that's the one of the rare and only thing in this uh, bracelet project that I won't be doing something realistic because I'm doing that the wire fades inside the, the next wire, which it's not real. In fact, that wire keeps uh, going through all the beads, making this wavy pattern, and it's just one wire, okay? But I'm doing that one wire fades into the other one just to make it look good. And uh, it looks good on the outside, all right? So yes, it's... Okay, now we have obviously a problem. Again, we need to change the array. Here, maybe 71, uh, 70, let's have a look at this. Let's see if we can find uh, 85 maybe. So every time you move a vertex, the X factor for the array of the entire bracelet is going to change. 
it's a bit tricky but it's part of the fun in fact it, it, you could do this using geometry nodes you could but not very well for the well you, you would need to adjust the wire the bezier curve just the same by hand and numbers anyway that's why we're not using geometry nodes today it's not really relevant it would not be more efficient it would not be more interesting and it would be not even uh, more fun or whatever it would be just facing the same problem with another tool this was 0.5 and don't forget to go to the end and check that it matches do you match no it does match it does not match okay so we need to move um um, we need to move. Let's move to GX. Let's move a bit to the right. And here we can see. Okay, here we can see the distance. We need more. We need more distance. Point. My reference, as a good reference to solve the problem, you can check the distance of the wire to the edge of the bead on the inside. This this part especially. And we can we can see that we are further away here that means that the x factor is too low so it's going to be i don't know 0 0.05 uh, 0 0.51 okay but now we need to check that it keeps that distance up to the end until all the end and uh, no it's not so it means that it's still a bit too small no, 52, no, 502, sorry. No, 501 then. What happened? Why did it change that much? 51 was pretty good. Okay, 51 is pretty good. Yeah, but it's not enough. It needs to go at 12 maybe. Okay, so 05 no one 11 one 15 just a bit less one two okay are we keeping okay the distance it, it might get just a bit shorter the goal is that from the beginning to the end you have the wire the nylon wire going on the inside of the beads obviously all right and uh, this is about it this is it this is it this is good this is good so let's travel the entire bracelet something like this okay all the stitchings all the stitchings all the stitchings okay now on this side okay top view let's see about the distance Okay, here at the top, I could try still. Let's see if it doesn't change the distance. Yeah, it changes the distance. Yeah, that's the sad part. Like I said, every time, ah, but we could try to add. Okay, let's add one vertex like that. And so now the distance is smaller. It's just to show the problem. That's why I'm doing it again and again. I explained the problem already. Let's go to the right, point nine. Okay, this is pretty good. Let's go to 88 maybe. And let's see that up to the end, we get the proper distance. So now this one is too far, way too far. No. <laughs> eight seven five then okay top view and top view okay 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 but just i want to correct i made this diagonal key zoom in with the okay this okay okay now if i just move it on the y-axis it it's not going to change the distance, all right? Only if I move it on the x-axis like this. Okay, 
now it's totally dissolving into the the other wire it's what i said i would be doing like that for all the stitching of the bracelet all right but i need to check now again that the bracelet that the, all the wires are still in place all to the end and they're not they're not so we need a 93 maybe <laughs> no i said 493 sorry okay we're almost it okay here we we are it on this side top view to see all the wires okay it's pretty nice so this is if you want to do a pretty wavy pattern for the wire in between the beads Otherwise, if you don't want to have all that, you know, number and distance problem for the factor of all the array, simply put a cylinder in the middle and repeat with the array like I did in the first version. Actually, the, this, this version, you just make a loop and you multiply the loop all over the place and you're going to get something realistic because many bracelets are made like this, but because uh, I'm making the tutorial and making something a bit more complex. I showed how to make, and the problem that it, that it is to, to make the, the proper distance for all the wavy pattern, and we get this, okay? But um, in fact, it's not that hard. I just made it look a bit harder, just to warn people that if you're not careful, you're going to make a mess with your array. That's why I took a longer time to make the wavy pattern on the outside and all of that. And I moved it, I changed it maybe too much, <laughs> too many times, but to show what problems you're going to get making this wavy pattern using a Bezier curve and an array. But actually it's one of the best way to do this. So, all right, it was just to show that it's not that simple and don't pretend that it is that simple because it's not. You will like, many people want things to be easier or simpler or faster and all of that. I know, me too sometimes, but we need to be careful and dedicate a special attention to very specific details. This is jewelry design. All right, so now we need to model. Okay, so the endings, uh, obviously here on the right side, you can see that this wire is not necessary uh, up till there, but we need it here. And then we are going to need knots and we need to design a finding. So what I want to see, let's go back to the Miyuki official website. So let's go to here. So what I need are the findings. So I need the catalog somewhere, mm, beads and crafts. There are some findings. I need findings, findings. Okay, so maybe we're going to search. Let's search now. For me, you key metal findings, something like this. Okay, so these are the type of images that I want. I've seen uh, one that is a bit more triangular. Uh, let's let's search for uh, bracelet findings. Metal. So these are very common uh, clasps and endings for the bracelets but i don't want that model i want there's mm, the lobster one we might use one but we're not going to model it today it's uh it's a bit longer um okay there are findings like these ones and you can see the holes where the wire is going to be stitched but I don't want that one. There's a pressure one, but I just can't. Well, let's let's search uh, better here. Okay, we need the findings. So uh, current finished beads, size and shape, manufacturing process. Blah, blah, blah. 
Leaky beads. I need the findings. Where are the findings? Loom? The leaky bead loom? Is it loom? Okay, loom material set. Parts! Okay. Let's go to the metal parts and frames. Entendido. All right. So, and okay, this is, uh, this is more like it because uh, I want something like with this shape. I like with this shape, something like this, with uh, maybe some decoration. That's the concept, you know, some uh, floral decoration uh, on the endings. But that's the basic concept that uh, that we need uh, now. And then, in fact, we're just going to use a T, a T shaped clasp. Uh, which is the, the model I did uh, on the first bracelet I published. Here we can see that's the ending loop, the big one, which is rather big and rather flatter. Not so, it's like more of a rectangular uh, section. And here we have the bar, the T bar, which goes on the inside of that uh, ending uh, loop and it closes the bracelet. It's because uh, we're not going to uh, yeah, we're not going to design a lobster clasp. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, but I don't really have the time. Sorry. So let's use a very common T clasp um, ending. But what we are going to design is that uh, we are going to make the endings uh, with this kind of... Tri tri triangular shape something between these two and um, with some decoration all right so let's go back to blender uh, top view so here the only bad thing is that uh, let's take all the beads and what I want uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I need the center of all of this but uh, maybe not Okay, anyway, let's start a new collection. Let's call it clasps, clasps. Okay, the clasps. Here we are with the clasp and let's start modeling that. And I'm going to finish, I'm going to end. Let's model this like for a couple of minutes. But um, like I said, there's going to be another second part, maybe a third part even. Let's add a mesh plane here let's make it s y so this is going to be the clasp and it needs to be a bit wider okay let's go somewhere like here now uh, to center this properly the the bad uh, thing is that i literally need to take okay let's do it i need to copy the entire bracelet Let's hide the original, hide the original bracelet here. Okay, let's make the entire beads into a mesh. Uh, convert to mesh, here we are. And now we can do the object set origin to the center of mass of the volume. And we have now, we have the center of the bracelet. That's the proper center of the entire bracelet, okay? So we have this Y coordinates, uh, the Y coordinate. Okay, this is the Y coordinate of the bracelet. And I need that exact same Y coordinate for the clasp. And now it's centered. So let's call this bracelet center <laughs> of bracelet because I need all this just to get the proper center of the bracelet and the entire design. Okay, now the, the clasp is centered. Okay, the clasp also, let's add a new material and make, uh, let's call it uh, golden metal <laughs> or golden, golden, or yeah, golden, because it's like, or no, let's call it gold plated, gold plated, or let's even call it because generally it's gold plated. If it's good quality, it's gold plated brass because it's lead free, uh, it's not too heavy, and it's uh, a brass is a, a very nice aleation, already golden 
color metal and it's uh, not a health risk like lead because lead the metal the lead metal is very dangerous around the world it's a huge problem in car paints and um, well paint no, not car paints we are also in all types of paintings they're lead generally but it's generally illegal now because we know that the lead uh, can kill somebody very pretty quickly so and uh, the bad manufacturing people they use lead inside the jewelry and you should never do that because you, you literally kill people you kill children's because children's they they, they they bite on the jewels and they eat the lead or part of the lead and they get it gets to their brain and it makes you literally brain dead in a couple of hours okay so it's that mortal yes it is lead is a very bad metal so that's why brass is a very friendly metal but it's uh, not as cheap but it's uh, really a nice quality internal hello everybody hello all right okay so welcome to the, this uh, live stream which is also a tutorial that i'm going to publish in the normal tutorial section okay so we have this and uh, what about what about we're going to make it a bit uh, here uh, and let's add because i already added the material this is going to be a golded uh, gold plated or oh, what did i put as a name <laughs> it should okay gold plated brands that's perfect that's a exact perfect name of all of this okay so i just want for the viewport a yeah, some golden color just to, to see the difference. All right, so now to view. And we need to move it maybe, maybe here. Now, let's make, uh, let's start modeling this. Make an extrusion. Let's see. Somewhere there. Okay, let's make a, okay, one millimeter. Let's go on 1.5, which is pretty realistic. Now, let's center the geometry. Uh, okay, let's center this. And on the Z axis, let's go at zero. Okay, so this is centered now. Obviously, then we'll have to uh, make uh, the cuts to make the proper knots to end the bracelet. Okay, so that's very important and uh <laughs> she says hello hello kitty <laughs> that's why it's late and but let's keep on modeling all right all right let's 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 keep on uh okay let's go forward with this okay so we need to take uh, now we're going to take this face we're going to extrude it to the left on the x-axis now make it S Y to make it uh, something like here, yeah, something like this is not bad. So it's vaguely uh, inspired by these findings here, metallic findings, uh, looms, <laughs> looms, uh, something like that. Okay, it's inspired by that. Just quickly. Okay, so now we are going to take this face and this face we yeah, have something like that let's make an i key to make an inset are we going to make an inset nope it's not working so let's make a an extrusion e click and let's make it smaller by individual origin and not on the z-axis keep it at one on the z-axis now you're going to move that a bit back we're going to make it like here somewhere like here so we have we only have one side no no, no that's not what i wanted i wanted like I said, I want two sides, this, this one and this one. Let's make an extrusion, extrusion. Now let's make it smaller. On the individual origins, we have both sides, but on the Z side at one, so it does not compress like that. And move it somewhere here. Okay, so we're going to remove now. Let's, because we're going to make a hole there. 
Uh, I know, but you know what? Sorry. Because I'm designing as I go. So make it, let's make it a bit bigger here. And, oh, sorry. Before you do that, let's make it bigger like this and also keep it at one on the Z axis. That's very important. So it does not deform on the thickness side. All of this. Okay, now let's delete uh, only the faces. So we have this, but we're going to take uh, the vertices here, tuck, 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 and these, and generally the bridge edge loops should work really well. And this is perfect. Okay, we have this uh, on that side. Let's make a control A uh, on the scale. Okay, that's pretty good. And let's uh, have a look at the bevel modifier for this friend. Okay, but not so okay because that distance. Offset, let's make a percentage maybe. And uh, now let's maybe absolute then. Okay, on the inside, it's not so good. That's because of that distance. Let's go see if I can. No, I can't really. Um, okay, let's have a look at subdivision surface. Okay. Let's go two, three. Okay, this is, oh, wow. <laughs> that was not planned like this, but this is amazing. That's why I, I love taking my time and make all the steps in in that way let's let's go to smooth shading because we're going to end up with a better looking clasp what i need to do now is that the face on the right which is the ending face this one needs to be straighter so what i'm going to do uh, and because the subdivision is making everything smoother which is really nice but we need that side to be uh straighter because we need to stitch the ending knots for all the bracelets on each side okay so let's extrude this on the y-axis something like this and that's pretty good now we can see if we can make the hole a bit so okay let's take the edges let's take these i'm oh, sorry that top edge and that lower edge uh, i can't take this one okay this one and the top one now because we want that to be shorter if possible here now we need this and that to move also there because i want to make the hole a bit bigger ah here i would need uh, another division but the problem is that i know that's not a problem let's have a look at this face and that face and ask for a subdivision okay but no it's not so cool <laughs> so that part that part might uh, or maybe let's have a look if i can subdivide this one uh yes but no <laughs> that's not so nice okay but i like this shape pretty well i just let's have a look at s y okay hmm it's all right like this it's all right like this and we're going to make a three level of subdivision let's go back to the bracelet uh, top view now uh edit mode from there i need to move it here and i do need it uh, bigger on the y-axis because we need to make this stitches like i already explained um, so we might even make uh, four or five four is pretty good four levels of uh, of subdivisions looks pretty good but now we need and now we need now we need now we need to uh reduce the space here uh we might make cuts we are going to make cuts let me show you what we're going to do here Okay, so here we're going to create a let's create a cylinder here, and I need to center that to the. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is hide 
the array for a second and I need to copy exactly the same Y position. Okay, now this is centered to the Y, to the Y. Now let's go to the front view, G, Z, all right. I'm going to make cuts in order to be able to stitch the wire. Uh, but this is not centering to that. I don't know what it is. Okay, sorry. The the Y from this wire. Uh, it is already. It is already. Uh, but it's not. Okay. Let's me. No, but I can't because of the array. Let's see if it changes the array. Just talking about the, the center, the geometric center there. I need to center it to the geometry if possible. Did it do it? Yeah. Okay, now it's centered on the Y position and that's great. Let's hide the array for a second. Let's copy this position to the cylinder and this is for that. Okay, so what I'm saying is that we need to to make these well let's do it because the concept is that we need to be able to make oh <laughs> is okay internet is back I guess it was just a misconnection for a second not too bad <laughs> Do we have internet? Yes, we have internet, <laughs> all right. Okay, anyway, so uh, let's make a mirror uh, from that object on the Y, no, sorry, on the Z. Okay, perfect. We need this. And let's move this already somewhere here. So that side, I will see. I, I want to remove more metal. You'll understand pretty soon enough what I need to be done here. Okay, now we're going to make it a bit oval on this side. So we're literally, I'm oh, sorry, we're literally designing a brass finding for a Miyuki bracelet. That's what we're doing. And um, bum, 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 ba, da, dum, bum, 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 Okay. Um, do, 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 and we are going to do a shape like this. All right. We have we have this. Now we're going to make an array. Exactly the same array because this is to make the knots of the wire. Okay. On the finding I'm talking about let's remember that it's this type of finding and in every hole the wire is going to come to be stitched and finished with a simple knot in reality in in real life right you know okay so we have this the direction is not X is Y and it actually it's going to be the same it must be the same distance as the wires uh, but the sizes are not the same, so we need to find a new count for the, well, the new Y factor, something, okay. And let's put, I don't know how many, I don't know, we have, no, yet we do have 12, so factor 1, 9, 192, 1825, we need obviously to end up centered to the last wire, all right, 35, 30. <laughs> 30 okay this is pretty good and okay so now what's going to happen we're going to take this friend and we're going to make a boolean uh, this is going to well let's use the fast solver let's take these guys let's remove this and let's have a look okay so that's step one of my strategy of designing the finding the brass finding there's just something ugly on the, the shading, but this should be solved with an auto smooth. Okay, it is solved with an auto smooth. So now what do we need? We need the hole. We need to drill to, to have those famous holes that we need to stitch the nylon wires. That's what we need, all right? And um, let's do that because yeah well let's let's do that 10 minutes because i'm a bit 
Well, I'm happy, but I'm a bit tired. But I'm happy because uh, this tutorial is... This live stream, this, this tutorial is, is uh, it work, working wonders, uh, honestly. It's, it's a lot of fun to do this. Okay, so what do we need now? Now we need just a simple... Let's add... Okay, so let's show this cylinder. Let's make a Shift S cursor to select it. And here we are going to add a cylinder yep but here we're going to drill it at uh, 0.4 and but this one is going to be like huge like this because we're going to drill and I want the holes to be somewhere somewhere there all right and this friend okay so maybe not that high don't be that exaggerated just high enough so it drills it drills the entire brass finding there. All right, so we can hide this a again. Well, not yet. All right, so the array. I think we can here. We might. Okay, let's let's put an array on the cylinder. <laughs> let's go array. Here, obviously, zero here and one here. Okay, we are going to try at first the same distance for the y factor. It might be, but generally if the size of the object, say, okay, because it depends on the size of the object, you can't use the same factor. That's one of the small issues about using arrays and different objects for all of this, all right? Okay, so mm, we need more. We need more here. Okay, and let's go at 12 uh, counts. 12 or 11, I never remember. No, it's 12, it's correct, because we have one more wire than a rows of stones, of beads. So it's 12. Let's go at 3.61. And this looks, okay, maybe 08. Okay, the most centered than you can. So, okay, we're going to hide this. We're going to take this friend. We're going to add another boolean and we're going to add a fast difference again with these guys and hide this and now it's drilled okay so uh all right this is pretty nice it's pretty nice it's pretty nice and we are going to stitch then i will have to make knots and we are going to really make 3d knots like basic knots but real knots using this blue wire nylon wire all right and that's when it gets fun but that will be in the next part but still what i want to do like i said uh because i'm using inspiration of the miyuki catalog of uh, looms and findings i want some little decorations just before i go and to end up on a more create creative note uh, so we are going to make some, uh, you know, uh, floral designs on the findings. It's always a lot of fun and in Blender is a lot of fun because we are going to, what are we going to do? We are going to, okay, so these are the clasps. So this is the clasp itself. All right, let's see, uh, clasp. Okay, that's the clasp, <laughs> brass, clasp, clasp. All right, this is a brass clasp. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go add, let's add a busy curve and we are going to use a very efficient technique. There are millions of videos about that, but we really love Blender for this same reason. Okay, let's go uh, here and uh, I am going to, I think I'm going to, there are many ways to do that, but I'm going to turn on the, well, million points, yes the the magnet the snap to uh faces faces snap faces closest yes or median yes and uh, on the move uh, and it should be center i guess no closest okay we'll see now let's move uh let's move the vertex and the vertex okay it's working already with this because the vertex is going to get snap uh, at the the surface of the clasp, which is exactly what I want, because using using uh, well, let's start L using uh, just curves. We're we're going to use curves, and uh, let's do that. So let's start designing. I'm going to add 
I'm going to add uh, many curves. Well, all the necessary curves for <laughs> for okay, this is pretty good already. Uh, already, yo. Okay, let's come back here. Okay, nice, 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 nice. So it's it's really a lot of fun because I'm going to make, in fact, the the the, the more complex part of the entire uh, stream and tutorial today, I'm going to make it a, a lot faster, a lot faster, okay? So let's start with this. This is just one. So because we are using uh, something you need to know, because I'm using uh, Bezier curves, obviously the handles are not getting snapped to the surface automatically. Okay, so maybe here, let's do a subdivide. And you just need to subdivide. Uh, okay, let's move from here to subdivide when necessary because of the handles. But otherwise, my entire Bezier curve is getting totally snapped to the surface of the clasp to make the decorations I want. And I'm going to show that. I'm going to show that because I'm going to let's let's add a, a quickly a curve. Uh, Bezier circle here, well, uh, yeah, a curve circle. And here we can do, let's use individual origins and let's make it smaller. I want that square rounded shape that I love so much. This is my signature shape, honestly said. You should know that. I've been using that for decades now and it works wonders. And that's why I also got a bit like famous somehow. All right. So, so 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 this is the the profile i'm going to use on the curve but i want it like small like 0.6 to be 0.65 is perfect Control a scale now the basic curve here is going to get a uh, beveling object and this is my profile here so obviously it's too thick honestly said uh, but also that's what I want to see. And uh, let's have a look at different elements of the problem. The resolution should be higher. Let's go at 85. Okay, this is one thing. And we are going to need a tapper object, a tapper curve, because the endings of these uh, floral decoration, they need to, to be nice uh, and end up smaller and, you know, a nice... Uh, desvanecido. <laughs> okay, they, they need to, to become smaller and smaller. Uh, okay, so for that we need a add curve, busy curve. This is going to be the tapper object. So tapper, 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 tapper object, and this is the curve. And the curve needs to be uh, up and down. So something like this. So not too small at the end, but smaller. All right. Blender puts it at zero. So if you take it higher like this, it's going to become thicker. Okay, and it needs to become, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe something like this. I might need another vertex on my curve. I think we are going to use more vertices here. Okay, something like that, but even maybe, even maybe, uh, okay, so you, you need to develop, it's always nice to have the tapper object close to the curve that you're manipulating, it's going to be a lot easier to create the tapper object, the tapper curve, which is a compression curve, it's called in other softwares, okay, <laughs> okay, so this side needs to be smaller, a bit smaller, make it Okay, something like that. It's starting to be pretty good. Okay. And, uh, but now let's edit this. I'm going to do a, a bit more. Yeah, let's move this a bit more. Okay. Oops, pretty nice. That's just the ending on that side. And uh, maybe bigger so it has... Uh... Okay, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So the, this is one way of making this. There's another way. I think I'm going to use planes, honestly. Okay, I'm going to show the other way to do that. Also with the snap, just remove the snap a second. Let's add a mesh plane. Let's make it uh, smaller. 
So I'm going to hide this friend for a second. It's it's working, but I don't like the way the handles are behaving now. All right, let's, let's go here and uh, let's start let's start designing a similar shape something like that oops sorry uh just want this okay extrude so i'm extruding each time something like that so we have uh, we have we have some questions there in the chat, which is pretty nice. It's in Spanish. There's no problem with that. But the problem is I don't have time to answer the questions because it's already late and I'm tired. So uh, sorry, uh, Javi Alonso. Sorry, I won't be answering questions today. It's way too late to answer questions. And Tom says, ay, pero qué padre, uh, Eric está contestando por mí. Y, y bueno, es que también como son preguntas que recibo todo el tiempo, pues, <laughs> cuando, cuando son preguntas demasiado. Bien, en fin, so I'm saying that we are going to design something similar, but we are going to use the shrink wrap option and the solidify option to compare which one is working better on this clasp. I think this one might be working better, but we are going to compare what we're getting. Okay, so it's very similar to the other one, and but this time we're going to use a mesh instead of a curve, and we're going to project using shrink wrap. I love the shrink wrap modifier. The target is the clasp here. Okay, uh, it needs to be a uh, project on the Z axis, negative and positive, and we get the projected uh, result here. Now we are going to use a solidify. Okay, so if you check the scale, this is going to be very bad. Let's go a control A scale. And now let's make, um, what's this? I ask, okay, solidify modifier, yeah, simple, yeah, thickness 0.6, and the offset, let's go at zero. Okay, so that's way too much. Let's go at 0 0.3, well, let's go at 0 0.4. And uh, it's working better in this occasion. It's really working a lot better. Now, uh, let's put the gold material just gold plated here. Well, maybe not. Let's put it later. First, I'm going to keep it gray to, to, to have a better look. And let's put a subdivision surface. And that's, yeah, that's looking great. Let's go at three. Generally, I'd go at three, which is smoother. And let's go at object shade smooth. Okay, so now I can go back to the edit mode. And don't forget that this is projected from this plane to the class, to the design. And, uh, well, now I can easily edit the design, just moving the points, and it's going to be a lot smoother, and I'm going to have a lot more control. Well, sometimes the, the tapper object with curves works better, and sometimes the shrink wrap technique works uh, better. Today, the shrink wrap technique with just a plane is working amazingly, in fact. This is, this is going to be great. So I'm just going to make um the decoration on the clasp they're, they're not so many uh, let's extrude this and um so this is a way to end uh, well i'm i'm still going to be here like i said a uh, half an hour for this live stream and tutorial uh, the tutorial will be published uh, normally in my video list because i am i am recording uh, this is the first time i do it like this which is a lot better because I am recording the live stream and I will publish it like a normal video also because many people don't uh, don't see the, my live streams well when they miss my live streams I do have a lot of people watching the stream it's really nice 
Okay, uh, all right, this is really nice. So this is a decoration with the plane. The, the advantage of using the shrink wrap technique from just a mesh, a plane mesh, is that there's more control, but also because I can simply add, let's take the, these and let's make a shift D. Now I can move that here and I can start designing right away uh, I can start designing right away using exactly the same mesh and making my decorations as I go. And this is one of the things that make me love Blender. You can, you can really design. I'm creating this decoration right now. I, there's not any planned design for this part of uh, of the clasp, like I said, it's inspired uh, from um, it's inspired from uh, very classical designs from catalogs of jewelry catalogs. And uh, let's try to make this one look uh, attractive. It's really to give a custom touch. A custom design to this uh, the findings that we're using for uh, this Miyuka bead bracelets and it's uh, one of the parts that I can have fun uh, it's a bit more creative here so it's not always easy to design just on the fly like this generally it's not I never advise people to do that like just design on the fly uh, and design as you go. You generally will end up uh, with very, oh, sorry, what's, I don't care. With very bad looking designs, you should first draw your designs and then make the designs in Blender or whatever software you're using. All right, so, uh, okay, I'm not, Okay, this one went too far, I think, for this side. Okay, we're going to go something like that. This is starting to be interesting here. Okay, um, I just want to come back also on this side. So, if possible, come back on the inside. So, we'll go more on the inside here. And let's extrude this at least two times and this side one and two okay that's a bit better all right and let's come here okay it's a pretty nice decoration also and uh, i'm going to decorate the bracelet what i also can do right away is turn on the mirrors because I want, obviously, based on the clasp, I want this to go on the Y, not on the X, and on the Z, because I want the decorations on every side, okay? And I still, I'm still using the gray material just to have a better look at the design that I'm just creating right now. Well, actually, this time really live, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so the point here is that uh, I'm designing just uh, on the fly as I go and it's always a nice well this is a very nice exercise for uh, creativity all right here if you want you can make a cut uh, with the cut uh, tool <laughs> that's no problem a uh, blender has all the tools you need to do whatever you need uh, to be done honestly at this uh, level we have this Okay, I think it's pretty nice on that side. Okay, now, and I'm going to copy, uh, let's copy another face. So let's take four vertices and let's go and start from that corner. So don't forget that this is a shrink wrap and a solidify modifier and a subdivide modifier. It's one of the great ways to make these kinds of designs uh, on, an, on another mesh very quickly with a very high level of quality. All right. So, 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 so. Okay, let's make 
this uh, let's make this here and uh, and this is uh, generally also a bit more spectacular to to watch a lot funnier for the viewers for for you my dear publics and followers today and right now than other parts of the tutorial this part is a lot more uh, fun and impressive to watch because you can see a design come to life decorations come to life live uh, in blender and you can see how the design is progressing uh, by the minute so i'm not going to um, fill that part on the left side i'm going to leave it uh, totally uh, free of decorations because these are the part where the clasp is um, well really uh, grasping the other side so if we would have decorations there that would not be very clever because it would um they would be worn out way too uh, quickly right okay so we have this we have that it's pretty cute okay let's take another uh, face shift d let's make a duplicate here and let's keep on and uh, this is great also for me to to finish uh, today's uh, live stream with this because it's a lot of fun to be <laughs> modeling live like this it's what i enjoy the most and also that's why uh, many people follow me uh, most of the time they, they want to see this kind of uh, work uh, come to life and uh, okay we are going to are we going to yes we are going to and uh, it's, it's great it's a great way to 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 smoothly and very friendly <laughs> finishing this today's stream and tutorial and uh, i'm I'm really happy with uh, the result because I was able to show uh, all the aspects I wanted to to explain about the Miyuki beads, the Miyuki Corporation also, show a bit of the tradition they have, the history they have at the beginning of the video, uh, and the making uh, the 3D design of the beads and of the bracelets and the wiring, the, the stitching of the wires in between the beads. So don't forget to, to have a look at other angles like this, to, to rotate the view when you're designing like this, because suddenly maybe something goes wrong in the 3D space. Never forget to, to watch all the space, the 3D space, because now I'm just working from the top view and it's fairly easy to work, uh, to work like that. Here I want suddenly to, okay, yeah, I want to make this side better. Okay, so here I'm going to need a, another extrusion. Okay. So, obviously, uh, suddenly I move forward, but then uh, when I see something I don't like, I come back and I work details that, yeah, sometimes you move forward, then you come back. That's all the, the, the workflow that you need to develop practicing practicing a lot uh, and now also people can see uh, when i'm really working i'm a lot faster because now there's not much explained there's just i'm just designing this and when i'm designing and working obviously my uh, my workflow is way faster than uh, during tutorials obviously when i need to explain like now i need to pause what i'm doing and I'm not doing this at the real rhythm that I generally work because obviously I'm also famous for working very accurately and very fast and that's why my client love to work with me and also because I guarantee the design with a very high level of guarantee that if you need to change something I'm going to do the changes uh, very quickly and some people uh, well, they, uh, I get, I guess they get confused that when I'm explaining things, I'm, I'm very slow. That's normal. <laughs> That's natural. You, you don't want me to be explaining things very fast. That would not be very 
friendly to follow. Okay, so you should just understand that explaining things and teaching are very different worlds. All right. Okay, so I still need a couple more decoration. Let's keep on doing this. There are still people uh, joining the live stream now. It's great. Welcome. I'm finishing really the. I'm really finishing uh, this modeling part. We still have to make the knots for the wires in the next uh, video and all the materials and all the rendering and all of that. Uh, but uh, all right, it's pretty good. Where are we going to go now? Extrude this. I'm just extruding this. Extrude that. Okay, that's pretty nice. Let's go here, here. Uh, are we going to... Yes, I guess we're going to make something a bit different here. Okay. I love the way goals and come back on the other side so let's make that stronger here okay so obviously now uh, the process is a bit repetitive because well i do need to make a decoration on the entire clasp and to join the sides but nonetheless it's always very nice to watch and nice to do Okay, so we have this, we have that, and this is pretty great. Okay, pretty great, pretty great, pretty great. So what do you have on that side? Let's go here, let's make it like that. And okay, I'm, okay, I'm going to make this side shorter and we're going to make a type of floral return here. That's a bit sharp, but I think some parts need to be sharp like this. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, let's copy, let's copy this side. Let's bring it here. And let's start uh, going the other way. Let's make okay, it perfect. Let's see if we can make a big, a very big. No, this one is okay, right? I'm going to go a bit rounder here if I can. Uh, rounder, no. I, I'm going to keep some. I'm going to keep some. Um, hmm, somewhat. I'm going to keep some sharp. I love the mix of sharp and soft curves. Okay, we have this. Um, hmm. This is too big on this side. Let's cut here and there. Now I'm going to make a similar rounded decoration, I think, here. Coming back and coming back on the inside. Hmm, this is pretty cute. Pretty cute here. Okay, I said this one round. Are we going to keep it round? I think yes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. So, um, okay. Obviously, then I'm going to smooth this this part. You can see the beginning. This side has the smooth shading, and that side has the flat shading still. That's because I'm just the new faces. They're getting the flat shading by default, which is nice. Uh, we can see better the topology of uh, the shapes. And that's why I'm working with this uh, flat shading and I'm not changing the shading now. And also, like I said, the material is not set. It's the default gray material. Well, the default great no material in blender so here i'm going to oh yes i'm going to change this here all right 
I could go pretty far down here because I just need to avoid the the drills. But I can okay, we can have that. Now the question is, yeah, well, I think I'm going to come back here, come back here. Okay, that's pretty nice. All right, and okay, now it's just more like a creative highway. I can really enjoy. <laughs> the design, all the hard work I made earlier. Okay, so here I generally like to do that, this little comeback here. I just need uh, maybe one more like here, all right. This is great, all right, this is great, this is great, great. Okay, but I do need also another cut right there. Okay, now we're going to complete um, the design uh, here. That's pretty good, but we need something more on this side. So let's come back here. Let's make a T, T shaped arrow here. Is that yeah, it's pretty nice. Like I said, it won't necessarily be my best design. Well, it depends. Sometimes you make your best design when you just create on the fly. But it's not the recommended workflow, I'd say. I'm just really designing this decoration as it goes. And uh, it's like the, the work of just filling a space with decoration. Like when you're bored at school, you know, some students do that on, on paper with a pen. This is exactly the same, filling an area with a pattern and with a non-repetitive pattern, okay? <laughs> Which is, it's just fun. It, that's true, it's, it's really fun to, to do, to, to pass the time. Okay, here I, mm, do I want it to, well, I could. This is, I still have some, uh, details to check it's first i just create the general shapes uh, pretty quickly like i'm doing now and uh, do i want this like uh, i don't know yet i think i don't want it i think i prefer to have it separate like this and have maybe this uh, yes <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that later some other day we'll, okay it's pretty nice let's go here around the, the drill the hole oh it's pretty nice shape it's pretty nice shape okay I'm liking those shapes it's it's really fun to to be able to to get, to, well, to do that during a live stream, honestly, is a lot of fun. Uh, here, I think we're too close. Okay, let's turn on the, the move pivot for a second so I can work. Uh, so here, I'm, I'm not moving the points. If you can see, all the mesh is on the same plane because this is just a projected shrink wrap modifier with the uh, solidify modifier which is a very well-known trick in blender and this is why we love blender that much because the modifiers are amazing and this is already version 3 of blender and they're doing something uh, amazing i've started using blender five years ago and teaching blender yeah five or even yeah, already six years ago that's not the point of today's uh, <laughs> video or live stream. The thing is that um, I I'm al already in a position where where I can speak about the the evolution of Blender in the past years. I wasn't necessarily one of the earliest Blender users at all. I will that would be a totally wrong claim uh, for me. 
But for jewelry design, yes, uh, I, I'm one of the, the people who introduced many people to using Blender for jewelry design. I can't really say that I was necessarily the first one to do that. And I don't need to claim that. It's not an issue. I, I don't need to be the first one or claim that. It might also be wrong. Uh, but I was one of the earliest people around the world to show that using Blender for high jewelry design is really, really great. That is a correct claim. I was one of the first people to do this at a professional level, at an academic level, because I did this first through my school here in Mexico City. Recall that the school does not exist anymore. I still teach from time to time to advanced and professionals. I do not teach to beginners anymore. I still do uh, my video tutorials on, on YouTube as a YouTuber. I, I still love to just show uh, how is my work, uh, my yeah, my daily work of jewelry designer using uh, tree design or using Blender. I I just don't I. I use many softwares, uh, but for 3D, I, I use two softwares, Blender and 3Design, which is a French software, which is very expensive software for jewelry design, but it's amazingly powerful. Blender is really great, but it's not necessarily specialized in uh, jewelry design. There are some tools that are, and will always be missing really in Blender compared to the expensive okay this is really nice okay so i uh, what i do want i do want a small sphere here in the middle so let's make a shift d and i'm going to make this side overlap you can make the mesh overlap uh if it's you can overlap meshes it's not a problem uh, many people think that overlapping is a problem when you you are you're going to export this for 3d printing it is generally it is you should avoid overlappings honestly you should <laughs> you should really avoid overlappings okay let's make this let's give it a shape to this uh, little uh, decoration here in the middle it's a bit hard with the with the mirror turned on uh, but in very specific occasions overlappings are not bad for 3d printing you won't really have you will need to repair your mesh obviously with uh, any sdl doctor i already showed that in some tutorials not that many uh, but i do have some tutorials that show that and i already talked about that uh i i will do that more because i have a new 3d printer you also know that and that's great my 3d printer is working very well so i'm very happy with that uh okay here so this is about it for there let's have a general view do i like it okay here i don't like this uh, i don't i don't like this yet i almost like this but this is maybe okay this should no sorry extrude so i'm just extruding what i did for almost all the decoration is just extruding two vertices at a time and that's and that generates the entire design using the shrink wrap and solidify modifier okay so now i'm just going to come down this this is the end of the tutorial the live stream uh, well we're coming to the end which is the end of the modeling part in the next, because this is a, obviously an ongoing uh, tutorial, they asked me to, to talk about Miyuki Delicapete's bracelet, which is actually a great idea, even if it's not properly a goldsmith craft at all. This is a beading craft, which is a Japanese beading craft. It, it's a huge craft around the world. Many people make Let's go back to, to what it was all about. Just a second. Um, where is that? Okay, first, 
Uh, it came from Vietnam Crafts, which is a very proper name for a follower, and uh, asking uh, that if I could talk about the Miyuki Delica bracelets. And obviously many people, even I didn't know what it was because here in Mexico, we call that very differently. Okay, so the Miyuki bracelets are all these designs which are uh, stitched beads, glass beads. The Miyuki bead, the Miyuki bead is a very high quality glass bead from Japan and a very traditional craft. So many people do this, but here in Mexico, we call this the peyote bracelet. I don't know why, but actually if you search peyote, I think, or peyote, well, the peyote is also a plant, uh, peyote beads, or yeah, peyote beads. Okay, it's exactly the same. Uh, in fact, it's exactly the same craft. Uh, many people know that under many different names, but it's a, a type of jewelry that actually is a huge business around the world. But this is a, a, a more a craft uh, instead of, uh, because uh, we jewelers, we do melt the metal. Uh, we, do, we use a lot of fire and heavy tools and a lot of machinery and a lot of uh, different uh, tools. We have many more tools than people who make uh, beaded jewelry. But the business is well, very big around the world and many people make a lot of money, are very famous artists or crafts uh, people, uh, men and women and children and many people around the world. So some, some children make very nice money from a very early age <laughs> making this kind of jewelry, which is interesting. The, the thing is that when you turn uh, as a professional, well, people start making hiring people to, to do all the beating, obviously, because some people are very fast and making very high quality beating to make bracelets, earrings, uh, and all type of uh, necklaces also. And it's a very creative field. So now the difference is that we're making this, they asked me to do that in, in 3D, in, do that in Blender. And it's, it's a great idea. And like I said, I already made a, a version of a Miyuki bracelet with metallic beads, uh, with all the stitching uh, with nylon wires inside the beads, the clasp and all of that a couple of weeks ago. And I promised that I would be doing the tutorial on my channel. And here we are making the first part of the tutorial. And so in the tutorial today, I made uh, all the beading and all the stitching. And I started designing the, the clasp, the ending clasp. And I wanted, uh, okay, I, I did a more decorated clasp because it's a lot nicer. And it's based on, where are you? Uh, okay, here. It's based on the Miyuki uh, Beads catalog, uh, the, the Loom and Findings catalog. So it's based on some designs, but obviously I'm making a, a, uh, a higher quality decoration on my clasp because it's part of my job uh, to, to deliver a higher quality uh, design and model. Okay, so this is it uh, here on that side. It's pretty nice. Uh, now let's turn on just the metallic material, which is the gold plated brass for these friends. And let's turn on the schmoo... Uh, <laughs> The smooth shading. Thank you, sir. Here we are. And uh, I'm still looking at uh, the details of my decorations here because, well, this could come. Uh, yeah, just to, to. It's like a more meditative uh, time now in the tutorial because I'm relaxing more because I achieved what I wanted to do, to talk about, to show, to share uh, with you uh, today uh, during this live stream. And like I said, this time I recorded uh, the live stream and I will publish this one as a, a normal tutorial. So it's going to get a much wider audience, even if today actually a very nice stream because uh, a lot of questions. Uh, thanks also to Eric who answered to Javi uh, because like I said, I did not have time to answer the questions and I did not plan. Sometimes when I do the live streams, it's more about Q&A and uh, sometimes it's just me uh, wanting to 
accomplish a specific tutorial or talk about something very specific so I'm not in a question answering mood or a goal or whatever so sometimes I just don't answer questions because it's not part of my uh, timing or my plan sometimes uh, we some people are starting to ask questions that are more uh, interesting for me because like I said I, I've been doing this for decades now I started 3d modeling <laughs> 30 years ago and yes I do link uh, I, I do make a living from uh, 3D modeling and 3D rendering and also teaching. But like I said, because because of the pandemic, I had to close my jewelry school here in Mexico City and I'm totally changing my business model. So I started working more as a 3D artist again and as a jewelry designer because that was already part of my job. But now I'm focusing a lot more on the 3D working part and uh, selling assets and making designs for uh, uh, custom designs for private clients. This is my main job as well, freelance, but I have freelance. I I've been doing this for so many years that I'm a pretty much, uh, pretty much established designer uh, in many countries I have clients so it's not that new to me but it's the focus that has changed because I quit uh, traditional teaching and I'm I'm still doing teaching but for professionals only and uh, not for beginners anymore because I was really sick I was really sick of teaching that much after 17 17 years of teaching that's a lot i was teaching from monday to saturday that's way too much i was teaching i don't know 40 hours a week yeah or even more that's crazy but that's also why my my work as a teacher or as a school director because my school became famous uh, around the world uh, and that was nice because I I I had a lot of uh, well I still do have as as a person now that's that's the difference uh, before it was because my institution my school became famous but now I need to work more as a as a person again and it's my work as an artist as a designer as a three D modeler as a sculptor as all of that that needs to become more attractive for more clients and also that's pretty nice that's why i i love uh, making live streams make uh, well working as a youtuber now also even if sometimes i don't have really much time to uh, to make that many videos but still i love what i love about the channel and, and thanks to all the community now is that my channel is very well alive because i receive very nice uh, challenges or questions or um, ideas from my followers so thanks to all of you okay so for for today we're good like i said we made the the clasp so obviously we'll we will have here these are the nylon wires we we will make i will make the the real knots well 3d knots because these wires which are nylon wires are uh, stitched to the clasps so that's why the metallic findings uh, let's go back to the catalog so this is the official Miyuki uh, bead catalog with each are the looms and findings so these are endings and clasps for any type uh, in, in, uh, of designs okay so I'm I just showed that at the beginning that I was going to very uh, well to be inspired by the catalog they have but I was going to make my own design let's say I made something similar to to this one here uh, this one with the, the holes but I made the holes closer to the edge and some decoration like that one and more a triangular shape like that one here the p9 model but obviously my model is totally custom and, and made for uh, my own uh, needs and 
<laughs> artistic tastes. And uh, okay, so I did all the bidding, all the wire uh, stitching, and we we will have to make at least a second part because I still need to make all the knots, complete the shape because like I said, we need to end up with a bracelet looking render and make all the materials and all the render settings, which is like the third part of uh, the, the tutorial and uh, the, the concept of all of this. But, uh, okay, great, so for today, that's that's already the two hours. Yeah, two hours and a half, that's crazy. That time just uh, went by flying. That's great, because I, I'm, I, I'm not that tired. It's, it's time to go to bed, I guess, but... <laughs> But but anyway, uh, so thanks to to all of you for uh, following me, subscribing, uh, giving me such great ID for buying my assets. Remember that I, I do sell assets in the Blender market, which is also a great way to support Blender because um, generally at least five percent of my assets they go to the Blender institution, the Blender fund to to fund the development of Blender, and and this is something I really enjoy about the new. My new way of working, my new business model, it's really called it like that because it is, uh, like I said, I'm still in a transition phase as a person because like I said, I I was the director and owner of a very important jewelry school here in Mexico City. It was one, well, it, it was considered the best school because I was uh, one of the only people really teaching the, the foodscape from jewelry drawing, technical drawing, 3D design, 3D printing, manufacturing, uh, making the design stone setting. I, I was teaching all that, enameling. Also, we we, we, we had a uh, beating teachers uh, for quite many years and, and the school became really famous. But, well, I did that for 17 years. I, I got really wet, tired and sick of some aspects of the teaching. It, it was also not uh, very good for my uh, my uh, my general life, my my social life. It wasn't nice or even my emotional life. It was not good for my a significant other, for my for my girlfriend. It was it was a bad uh, well, some aspects of my uh, of my work were too. I was too exposed. Let's say I was too exposed, it, it, that, and that became a negative, a too negative side of my life. So I had to to end all that uh, teaching. And but but in fact came the pandemic, and it was time to to retire of that uh, and to close the jewelry school. But obviously, uh, jewelry is my entire life. Well, almost, almost. <laughs> I'm still a painter. Uh, I love to draw and paint a lot. And that's why uh, I became the jewelry artist because I'm not just a jeweler. I, I was and I lived from oil painting and mixed media painting for many years. And that shows in my work. So it's it's all that transition from 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 being a, a, a big business of jewelry uh, jewelry school business, but now it's going back to my life, to my yeah my soul. Let's call it my soul, really, to my creative soul, and to reconnect, to re reconnect to a different type of people. And a different way of, of making uh, money and making uh, to to make a business grow, and actually you can see that on the channel be, through through all my tutorials and live streams. I'm I'm talking about many things, but well, today I was able to talk uh, really more specifically of this type of jewelry and and how to make beaded jewelry in 3D using Blender. So that's what we're started today. We still have a couple of hours to complete the project. So I'm making an, a new version of a Miyuki bead bracelet. Uh, I'm not making exactly the same one. Actually, I'm making a more attractive one, honestly. Uh, well, this one is pretty nice, but I, I, I want nicer colors and I'm making a, a better looking clasp, a more complex uh, clasp and thing like that. But also I was able to talk more clearly about the fact that I am as a person and also I'm as a professional, I'm in a very, well, it's it's quite hard in fact, but it's really more interesting because that's why I wanted 
uh, in my life to, to go back to a more interesting life, you know, because teaching to beginners, when you have a lot of experience after that many years, yes, it's really heavy to teach to beginners because it's like having a hundred kids. You can be patient with your kid, with one kid. I don't have kids yet, but I do want to have kids, obviously, uh, because that's also one thing in my life that uh, I, uh, well, I, I still want to, to do. <laughs> so, uh, but when you have many beginners and hundreds and dozens of uh, beginners, it's like having hundreds of children. You need to, to explain everything again and again and again. So obviously at the beginning, I had all the patience in the world, but when you, when you need to repeat something a million times, uh, well, I'm, I'm still human and you lose the you lose the fun in that and it start becoming really bad for you For your brain for your creativity for for your life for your emotions and physically I became Somehow ill of, of all of that. Okay, but uh, and now uh, well, I'm glad that somehow I, I know that I already started to find a new way through the pandemic, because like I said, I had a jewelry school. Now I, the school does not exist anymore. It, it was not possible to keep on working as, as a school owner and director and teacher. Uh, so came the pandemic. But for me, it was the perfect time to, um, to start changing my life. It, it was not that much forced because I was already in that dynamic of changes of many important changes and but i i still have a lot of um, reconnecting to do uh, especially uh, on the human side because and also obviously i i'm not and also on the business side but it's connected because you make money through the people you you know and people who follow you and people who love you even in fact and uh, it's all that process and it's it's slow it's it's slow it's naturally slow you can't you, you have to go step by step to to create a new uh, way of making money so obviously uh, it's harder now because i used to to make um, quite a lot of money uh, well I, I i owned a school and schools are generally pretty good businesses because there's it's, it's like restaurants people need to eat well people need to learn so if you have a restaurant you generally make nice money and when you own a school also you you make nice money and also because my business had already uh, i've been teaching for 17 years so after 17 years you have so much experience in your field that you know your field so well it's easier to make money okay so but uh well life is very is always interesting that life makes you change forces you to, to change somehow and if you work it out uh well well uh, life's life brings you to change in a way that you really enjoy and we should really work uh, and, and grow that way and learn that all the changes that life makes us go through all those challenges uh, are really for the best for our best but also for all the people around us and people who, who love us so that's it for today so uh, blessed and beloved jewelry community uh, thanks for everything so um we are at a very nice uh stage now of, of because the channel is is growing and uh thank you for following uh, liking sharing asking buying loving etc etc and like as always be nice to people be nice to animals be nice to the planet and see you soon thank you